Hi, Claire, thank you. First things first, you have accepted to do this presentation for us. Um, the future students of research projects, they really need your wisdom and uh, how you have worked and changed your folio to an A folio and your outcome to an A result. Okay. Um, at the beginning, I wasn't really so clear about what we were supposed to do for the proposal, but after some mentoring with Ms. Oliver, um, uh, she showed me that you need to look at the guides from the chief examiner's um, report, and it says she's put a few um, the P1s here, so through consideration and refinement of the research topic, it was easier to really understand what I had to write. Um, and the same goes for the P2, thorough planning and research process was that are highly appropriate to the research topic. Um, so I changed this to be more um, specific to what the uh, chief examiners were looking for. Um, I wrote this in the white um, before I wrote in the blue in the boxes, so, um, so I sort of wrote about how effective what my plans have been for the proposal um, and the capabilities. Um, they weren't such a struggle. Um, and the mind map here. Uh, initially, I just had the mind map out for the highlighted bits, and it was much more sparse than this. And, um, after mentoring Ms. Holloway, she told me I should write some improvements and write differences and how effective the, um, my plan would be. Um, I also, because my timeline here, I also wrote some reflective comments about that. Mm -hmm. I did an experiment to measure the temperature of the artificial and natural glass. Um, and you can see here I used an infrared thermometer to measure it. Um, these are the results that I obtained. Um, initially, I didn't think of putting a graph of the temperature, um, of, of the temperature. Um, but after some mentoring, um, Mrs. Holder suggested this would be a good idea. And so I've done a graph of the maximum, minimum, and average temperatures of the glass. Which is much easier to see for the mentor, uh, sorry, for the moderator. Um, and I also wrote an analysis. Um, and I put, I put more information into the one page, which was better. And as the folio is only 11 pages or 10, um, we really needed quite a bit of information on the one page, so that's really important. Um, and also, these colours were even brighter when they were harsh and a bit too bright for the moderator. So Ms. Holliver suggested that I make them dull and more pleasing to the eye um, for the moderator. And also I've included a survey of my sample. A uh, sample of my survey, sorry. Um, uh, and that was good because beforehand I didn't have that because I didn't really know how to put it on the page, I thought it had to be readable, but it doesn't really, because they're not going to look at it and read it, they're just going to, just need to know that you actually need a survey. Um, I also emailed a professor at the University of Adelaide, and Ms. Holliver suggested that I blocked out the names, or my mail, my teacher also said that, because for ethical considerations. Um, and here's just basically some information that I found and I reflected on it here in the blue box. So that is your expert? Yeah. Oh, no, that's not him. Yeah. yeah, that's your expert who told you that nobody has done the research you have. Oh, yeah. No one's done any research on the toxicity of the artificial glass, which is why um, I couldn't really get a primary resource as an interview. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, I realised well, along the way how important it was to have reflections and comments on your articles. So I've annotated this article here. Um, initially, I didn't really know what annotation of the article meant, 
but really simply just means evaluation and analysing the um, article. So it's analysing the credibility and usefulness of the article in regards to your own research project. So that's what I've done here. Um, and I've referenced my source. Um, here's more of the scientific background from a, a journal of exposure and environmental epidemiology. This is from the Nature Journal online source. Um, the, um, I've written about the long term and short term effects, so this is mainly the background of my research. Yeah. Um, and I've also read the personal collection, you can't see that very well. I've talked about the effectiveness of my research processes, um, how challenging the research was, and how I've developed my skills over the duration of the research project. Um, and this is important for the moderators to see what you've learned. Um, and that was something that was missing from the initial uh, yeah, folio. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it should be a compulsory thing to do. You think so? Yeah. Why do you think it should be? Because um, that's what the, well, our teachers emphasize, you've emphasized that it's really important um, for the moderators to know what you've learned. So. Um, Claire, this, and this is for the uh, students of 2014, yeah. eventually says has realized that, mm -hmm. and they have made that page almost Compulsory. Now it's compulsory to discuss in the folio the capability. Mm -hmm. You're right. And so the um, journals were compulsory, right? Yeah. And I found this a good way of keeping track of what I've done. And it was also good for the mentor to see, uh, moderator to see what you've done um, each week. And it's a good way of reflecting as well. Um, and the teacher discussions, which was a compulsory part. Um, but what is your trick here? Yes, tell me. My Ms. Oliver suggested that I highlighted the main points so it was easy for the moderators to see the, the specific things that they were looking for, the main important points of my research. And what I've done is like, say, I've emailed a member of the Adelaide City Council. Um, so basically, and also how I've adapted and changed and learned. And what skills I've learned, so endurance and patience skills. So highlighting this is really easier for them to see as they quickly glance over what you're looking for. Um, and that's, that's it. Um, also, one more thing is that I'd suggest to start the evaluation slightly earlier um, and edit that more thoroughly um, because I run out of time in the end to do that, so it's really helpful. Great, great advice, Claire. Um, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you.